So in this tutorial, I wanna show you guys how to create a head inside of After Effects that we can then use 3D layers to create a really realistic head turn. Let's get started. Let's go ahead and make a new composition that is 1920 by 1080 pixels, 23.976 frames per second, at least 30 seconds for our duration, and a white background. Let's hit OK. Now we're going to create a lemon head. It's going to look like a lemon with a face, because that seemed fun. So let's go ahead and get out our shape tool. Let's get out our ellipse tool. And let's make a new shape layer. Layer, new, shape layer. And let's go ahead and draw a lemon shape. Kind of like Hey Arnold, if you guys ever watched that show as a kid. Now let's make this shape a lemon yellow. Let's go up to the fill in the option bar and let's change this to be a nice rich yellow. No stroke should be applied. If there's a stroke, you can click on the word stroke and take the stroke off using the red line. Okay, let's go ahead and name this shape layer head. Let's draw two ears now. Let's get out our ellipse tool. Let's click off of head in our timeline. And let's draw kind of a similar shape, but it'll be an ear. Let's call this ear left. And rather than drawing ear right, I'm simply gonna click on ear left in my timeline Hit Control D or Command D if you're on a Mac, and that duplicates that shape layer. I can now drag and hold Shift to make the second ear. I'm gonna rename this ear, Ear Right. Let's go ahead and draw our face. Let's get out our ellipse tool once again. I'm gonna draw a tiny beady eye. Change the fill to black. You guys can make this eye look like whatever you want and place it wherever you want. I'm going to call this eye left. And just like the ear, I'm going to duplicate this by hitting Control D or Command D and then holding Shift and dragging this over to the other side. Let's go ahead and make our mouth. To do this, I'm going to kind of give him a, a silly mouth here. Make sure you've clicked off of any of your layers in your timeline. And I'm going to draw a mouth that's a little bit open, kind of like that. Again, you guys can make that look like whatever you'd like. I'm going to rename this layer mouth, and let's make him a nose. Let's click off of any of our layers. Let's get out our ellipse tool once again, and this time I'm going to draw an oval, vertical like that. But I want no fill, and I want a stroke that's going to be kind of a darker yellow. Hit OK. I'm going to keep my stroke around 7 pixels. And I want to draw a mask now that cuts this shape in half. So I'm going to select this shape in my timeline, come up to my shape tools and get out the rectangle tool. In the option bar here, we want to change this from drawing a shape to drawing a mask. Select the mask button. And now I can draw a mask around the part of the nose that I want to keep. And if you want to play with the inverted button, you can make the nose either pointed up or pointed down. I kind of like the pointed up nose. That's a good looking lemon if I've ever seen one. So let's start playing then with 3D layers. Let's first name our nose layer nose. 
let's turn each of these layers into a 3D layer. To do that, if you guys remember, we turn on the checkbox for the kind of three-dimensional cube here on each layer. Now let's go ahead and get into our two-view mode so we can see these three-dimensional layers in space. Let's come down to the one-view pull-down and change this to two views horizontal. This allows us now, if we click on different layers, to view those layers top-down bird's eye view. We now want to position these different features of our lemon head in various points in space to kind of create a three-dimensional look as we go to work with cameras. I'm going to select his nose and then hold control on the keyboard and select his mouth and his two eyes, basically all of his facial features. In my two view, in my top view, I'm going to grab this Z arrow for any of them, because they're all selected. I'm going to pull them forward. And then over here in my front active camera view, I can push these down a little bit. And reposition them to be centered. And that made everything a little bit bigger. I don't mind, but we could sit there and scale each of these to look like they did originally. But notice the, the, the distance that we've given this. There's now quite a bit of distance from his eyes, nose, and mouth to his head and his ears. Now in the opposite sense, I want to grab both of his ears, left and right, and I want to push these back in space. Now they've disappeared entirely, so I'm going to click on each one and push it out just until they start to show. Great. Now let's add a camera. Let's go up to Layer, New, Camera. A two node camera is fine. Let's keep the preset at 50 millimeters and let's hit OK. Now cameras can be hard to control. So I want to introduce you guys to a concept called a null object. A null object. I want you to think of null objects as kind of these empty ghost layers that you can apply and parent other layers to, and then use the null as a controller. We want to use a null object as a controller for our camera. So let's make first a, a new null object. Let's go up to Layer, New, Null Object. Now, null objects appear as little squares, but they're not made of pixels. They're completely transparent ghost layers. Now, I want to turn this null object into a three-dimensional layer. Mine says null three because I've created other nulls in this project before this tutorial, but yours should say null one. Now, before we parent the camera to the null, I want to change the location of my null object, this little square right here. It's kind of annoying when it's over the face of our character. I kind of want to move it over here to the side, and it will be more of like a kind of a joystick for our face in a little bit. Let's select our null object in our layer panel, and let's hit A on the keyboard to bring up the anchor point. We can now change the X slider to move the null object over here to the side, and I'm going to move it a little bit higher just to kind of have it off to the left a little bit, away from his face. Now let's go ahead and parent the camera to the null object. Under the parent and links pull down for the camera, let's select that and then select null three, or in your case, null one. So the camera is now linked to the null. The null, since it's a three dimensional object, can now be our controller for our camera. So what does this mean? Well, if I come over here to my null object with my regular selection tool selected, I can grab it and start to move it just by clicking and dragging it. And now we start to kind of have this three-dimensional look to our character and his features. What's cool about this as well is that we can, I'm going to control Z there, we can get out our rotation tool this rotation arrow next to the camera up in the toolbar. And if I hover over my null object and click and drag, 
I'm now rotating the camera and we can actually start to see those three dimensional layers in play. But when I start to move it subtly, we can start to really create some cool head turns for our character. I'm gonna hit Control Z and get that back to neutral. Now I wanna create a light that's gonna make our character's head feel a bit more three dimensional. Let's come up to layer, new, light. I wanna create a point light that's white in color, intensity around 110, 112, with no light fall off. We'll want it to cast shadows and you guys can copy my shadow darkness and diffusion numbers here. Let's hit OK. Now, depending on where it placed your light, your lemon head may be in the dark or it may look just right. It may look something kind of like this and that's not what we want. We wanna make sure we can grab our light in our top down mode and pull it forward to be in front of all of our other features. So again, we can see our eyes, our nose, and our mouth here. We want the light to be in front of it. And we can position this light to kind of create a nice three-dimensional glow to the lemon's head. And so now if I get at my rotation tool and I grab my null object controller, the light will create some nice fall off on his face. So how do we keyframe this? I'm gonna go away from my two views and go to my one view. That way I just have my lemon head. We're gonna keyframe this using the null object, but we're gonna keyframe it using something called the orientation. If you select rotation, we can see an orientation keyframe here at the top. So we're not actually keyframing with the X, Y, and Z numbers. We're keyframing with the orientation because when I click and drag my null object, you can see it's those numbers that are moving. So at zero seconds at neutral, I'm gonna go ahead and drop a keyframe for the orientation. Now I want them to kind of make a sharp up look here to the left. So at around half a second, maybe a second, I'm gonna grab my null object and make him look up in a way that makes his ears and his eyes look normal. That looks pretty good there. And now we have, when we play it back, a nice upturn with shadows that follow because of the light source. Where this really starts to come to life is when we start to play with the ease in and ease out of our keyframes in the graph editor. Let's go ahead and highlight both of these keyframes we just made and hit F9 on your keyboard to turn them into eased keyframes. And then let's go into our graph editor to take a look at these. Once in the graph editor, I'm gonna hit the plus button on my keyboard to zoom into my keyframes a bit more. Now I want his head to kind of ease into the turn and ease out of the turn, which means I'm gonna grab this in handle and pull it toward the center and grab the out handle and pull it toward the center as well. So we can see now with the graph that it's gonna ease in, turn fast, and then ease out. And sure enough, if I play this back, it does just that. The next thing we can do is add some motion blur to our head. I'm gonna turn on the motion blur aspects. I'm gonna turn on the motion blur for all of my head layers. Make sure that the master switch for the enable motion blur is on. And now when he turns, there will be some slight blur to his movement. And because this null object continues to act as our controller, we can drop more keyframes throughout. So I'm gonna apply a new keyframe right here at two seconds, and then make him look to the bottom right corner by using my rotation tool, and then dragging this to where his head is looking down. 
And same thing. I can go into my graph editor and apply the ease in and ease out for these keyframes as well. Now we could totally package all of these up into a pre-comp and place this entire head onto a rigged body that we're working with. And now we have a controller for a three-dimensional head for our character. Head turns in After Effects can be really difficult, but this method with layering our three-dimensional objects really helps. Now you could do this with the heads that you've designed in Photoshop. You would just need to bring them into After Effects and then break them off into the three-dimensional planes and then add your null object and your camera controller. This is a great way to create dimensionality to your characters. So utilize it and have fun.